Good morning. It is 12.18 p.m. on Saturday, December 12th, 2015. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. <clears throat> you know how there are those times where um, you really don't feel very good, but the feeling that you have emotionally about that is gratitude that it's not worse. Uh, I'm a little rough this morning. Um, last night, I stayed up watching the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Kickstarter telethon because it was it was the last night and they were doing a big a big whole to do production about it. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But part of what I was doing alongside watching that live stream was playing Lego uh, Dimensions and drinking scotch and the thing is it's like I've really gotten out of the habit of drinking regularly I don't I like I haven't even had any in the house for a while and I just sort of recently decided that you know it's nice to have on, on occasion but I guess I was just so out of practice that I really my tolerance was is, I was I was out of the habit of figuring out how much I need to have to not get really drunk. So, uh, yeah, that happened. Um, I mean, nothing really exciting or embarrassing happened other than just sort of inadvertently getting more drunk than I meant to. But, yeah, so I'm a little, a little rough this morning. But with the recognition that it could have been could have been much worse. It's funny how that uh, how that goes is just in terms of you know d tolerance and 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 of course you know one of the biggest uh, hazards with uh, things like alcohol is just this idea that part of what it does is to take away your brain's ability to make good judgments about how much you should have. And that's kind of a vicious thing. None of this is new information. Everybody knows this stuff. But so anyway, I'm fine, but I did sleep in until just a little bit ago. I am going to be moving a little bit slow today. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, the Kickstarter telethon thing was very exciting. MST3K is something, it's interesting, one of the things that they, they talked about a number, a number of times to various people during this whole telethon thing where they had lot, lots of people performing and doing little bits and pieces and skits and songs and acts and it was great, uh, but one of the things that they asked a lot of people was, what was your first MST3K experience? And I'm fascinated by that because I feel like I don't remember. Um, 1988 is when it started the first time, and uh, boy, you know, <laughs> that's a, you know, that goes back a ways. <clears throat> I vaguely feel like I was in on it pretty quickly. Certainly, um, I remember watching a lot of, uh, you know, the, the show with Joel, the first host. Um, and I, the thing is, it's just like, I feel like I watched it just a lot, constantly, all the time. Um, and yet, I, I have very few examples of like, like the first time or specific episodes. It's more just like, my brain just kind of got steeped in it. You know what I mean? And it's it's like other things, like, for example, the movie Back to the Future. I saw that movie probably a hundred times before I was 15. Um, and yet, do I remember the first time I saw it? No, I really don't. I don't, I don't remember if I first saw it on TV. I probably was a little young for my parents to have taken me to see it in the theater, so maybe on HBO? 
but uh, I, w I watched it a lot, but I don't really remember the first time. So that's kind of how it is for Mystery Science Theater 3000 for me, is that I just watched it a lot, but it all just sort of became part of the, you know, the, the, the room noise of my personality in my brain. <laughs> Um, and in fact, I mean, I, you know, I do a podcast occasionally called, Hey, want to watch a movie where we're kind of, we're, we're not riffing specifically because I mean, first of all, we're not trying to compete with the many other people who do exactly that all inspired by this original, but you know, just this idea of it's fun to watch movies and sit with friends and talk about it. I mean, that's, that's just part of who I am. And I don't know that uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 is entirely um, was able to claim responsibility for me being aware that that's fun, but it certainly it's in the mix. And so the fact that they had a very successful Kickstarter not only did so there was the you know the initial Kickstarter amount, but then the there was also the amount that they that they were really shooting for, which was to make enough um, for 12 full episodes. And then they got enough to do that almost before the real telethon part even started. So they were like, oh, okay, well, so now we're going to go to the next level, which is we get enough, this much we'll do a holiday episode. And then they got that much, and it's like, oh, okay, well, if we do this much, we'll do a 14th episode. And... And they did. They got all. They got enough. And watching all the way to the end of the live stream telethon was, if you know, it felt good. You know, it felt like you know being a part of something special. You know, not that I'm directly involved, obviously, but uh, other than having supported it on Kickstarter. Um, but you know, just watching these people that I that I like either having sort of grown up with them in my head like Joel um, and you know seeing you know Crow T Robot and Tom Servo um, uh, behind him making cracks pulling up lots of clips from old episodes and uh, uh, and then also seeing them team up now with a lot of the people that I like in entertainment and comedy now like Jonah Ray and Felicia Day and at Oswalt, and you know, I'm just, it's, it's really exciting, and so watching them at the end of this telethon, all kind of finding out, first of all, with only like a minute and a half to go, that they got the most recent amount that they had been targeting, because for a little while there, it looks like they weren't going to quite make that last level, um, but then they did, and <clears throat> Who knows how much stagecraft there was in that, but uh, um, in any case, that's that's kind of how it played out. And then they had like everybody who was there, kind of all coming together, and they had this big banner that said "Thank you, Misties," and uh, and they all kind of came together and sang the song, you know, in the not too distant future, next Sunday, AD. It was a great, it was a great moment, and uh, I was glad that I watched it, even if combined with that was the idea that, I mean, part of how much fun I had with it probably was related to the fact that I did get really drunk. <laughs> um, you know, that that was part of the mix of the whole evening, but now I am paying for that part of it a little bit. Anyway, I will talk to you guys tomorrow for five more minutes.